welcome back to the channel. Uh, as you can see, the wife's lifting my band for me. <laughs> it's the first time out on a bike for a fortnight. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thanks to all my subscribers and people that's been on my channel. As, uh, as you know, uh, I had to stand down a little bit from riding for a fortnight just as I come out of hospital. Uh, very nice to hear from you, wishing me well. Now, what I'm going to talk about today is on the last video, I did just mention why the wife had banned me from riding for a little bit because I'd just been in for a checkup due to having a heart attack six years ago. Um, it was a checkup I have to have every year, and I did say the first couple of years have been a bit rough, but no, I seem okay now. And I'm, tootling along as I do. Now one of the things that's uh, happened is on my Facebook and Instagram I've had an unbelievable amount of uh, messages. Uh, nothing bad, nothing to, to worry about. Right? Um, what they're from of people who's been in this who been or are in the same situation as I have had heart attacks uh, and some other illnesses and I've had absolutely loads of questions sort of you know how things are and how I coped so I'll run through the questions that I've been asked and and there's one in Pacific, really. I'll leave that one till last. And I was going to answer the questions individually, um, but I think what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll just bungle them all together of my thoughts and how my situation is. Right. Uh, let's start. First question is, uh, do, it, do I think I feel safe riding a motorcycle after I've had a heart attack? Um, well, I'll answer that one now. Uh, the doctors say, yes, no problem. I drive a car, I ride my bikes. He says, uh, you're the person that's had the heart attack. You know when you feel a bit iffy and when you don't, but we can't see it being a problem. Uh, what I was also asked was, after having a heart attack, could I ride my bike? Uh, did I have to, uh, was the bike too heavy for me? Was my balance okay? Uh, what did my wife think to me? Back on a motorbike after a heart attack. Um, how long was it before I was really back on my feet? You know, up and running as I felt good. Um, now, there's a few others because I'm, I'm actually riding my bike now and uh, uh, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. <laughs> but the, the main question, which I got from a lot of people, was, um, well, basically, what's happened to them uh, and how they feel was they got, well, a lot of people, as soon as they had the heart attack, I don't know whether it was their choice or the, the, the wife's or the family's choice, that was the end of the bikes. Get rid of it, sell it. Um, and some people are like, obviously, they must be looking on the channel, uh, uh, not just my channel, a lot of bike things, and you know, you, you get the yearning, don't you, if you've, if you've been a biker all your life, sort of wanting to get back on, but they're not too sure about things. Some of the other questions was a bit, uh, I had to think about it for, because uh, I answered all the questions, every single question they sent to me. I answered it individually. Was uh, depression and dark times? How have I managed with that? So that was uh, took a bit of thinking about that one, did to be honest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through really what happened to me, how I've coped with it, how I've got back on my bike, and what I think about things. It's now up to date, really. 
Right. Well, one thing was, I've always weight trained all my life. I since I was a young teenager. Uh, I varied it for different things. I, I used to race in Juro, so obviously uh, big muscles wasn't what you wanted. You know, it's more fitness, so I varied things. But uh, I, I was a big lad. Uh, what would it be? 15 stone. Hmm, what's that? 95 kilogram? I'm not sure off the top of my head. Something like that. Um, 34 inch waist, great big arms, great big chest. Now, I've always been into bikes since I, was, I lived on a farm. I rode bikes before I was even old enough. Um, but all my life, I've been into the, so we say, the chopper, chopper bikes, the outlaw type of life, backpatch clubs, serious ones. Uh, I was in one club for 10 years. Uh, so, to be honest, the weight training, big arms, looking big, menacing, sort of went along with the territory, shall we say now. Um, uh, now, even though it was a, a bit of a wildlife lad, I've never ever smoked, ever. Um, never took drugs. I was just a step away from it when, because obviously that was around me all the time. Not interested. Um, yes, I used to drink beer at the odd time. I'm not really into spirits, maybe a bit of Jack Daniels, Jim Bean. No, obviously I've had the odd sessions where I got totally wrecked, but <laughs> as a rule I didn't. Um, now my life went through like that, and even when I come to Bulgaria, first thing I did, I was invited because I was known by other people to join an MC club here, which I did. Now, I was 50 when I moved here, and I was still training, still big. My idea was, obviously, my young days and are gone, and I thought, well, yes, my face is going to look old, which I'm afraid it does. <laughs> but I can keep myself fit, still be a big lad, even though I'm old. Uh, it might sound a bit crappy now, now I think about it, but I still keep my respect, I suppose. So I carried on with the training. Now, I'm, I was pretty well known in my circles, shall we say. So I had an appearance to keep up and uh, so that's, what, that's why I kept training. Now I thought when I was 50, I'd still look the same. No matter how old I was gonna be, I would keep training. Now. When I had a heart attack, you, you know, it's, everybody's going to be surprised when you have a heart attack. And everybody else was surprised that I had a heart attack because I was so fit. Uh, and it, it turns out it was hereditary. My father's the same. He's uh, had a heart attack, open heart surgery. Um, now, it, it learnt me some life lessons, this did. One of the things was... I was, yes, I was quite well known for who I was. Uh, but when I had the heart attack, I had so many friends, mm, people that knew me. You know, I could be stood at a bar and lads would come up and shake your hand, buy your beer, like that sort of thing. But I had quite a lot of what I thought was close friends. And the first thing I noticed, well, I didn't at the time, but uh, I had other things to worry about, was, um, People, one by one, I didn't didn't hear from them anymore. Um, no, so that sort of pointed to me. I ended up with very few what I now class as friends. Uh, basically, if you're not where you are, as you was, people aren't interested, they don't care what's happened to you, you know, you don't give you even a phone call, which nowadays everybody's got mobiles, how long does it take to give somebody a phone call? Um, so that was, that's one of the things I learned. Um, all the people I thought was friendly, waste of time there was as it turned out, but that's by the by now, I don't care about that. Now, 
people who have heart attacks. I'm, I'm only going to talk about the heart attack side because some of the other th problems people have got sent me messages. I don't know anything about that. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm a mechanic. <laughs> I'm certainly not a psychiatr psychiatrist, is that the right word? I think so. Um, now, when I had a heart attack, I'd been away on my bike for the weekend and I felt a bit rough and people were saying, you're right, mate, you look a bit pale. And, yeah, you know, we all get off days, don't we? Anyway, I was out for the weekend and I left early hours of the morning, rode my bike home. I got home, I had a shower and the wife says, you don't look very good. I said, yeah, so I felt rough all weekend, that's why I'm back. I sat watching television and I, don't, I can't remember much, but I got up and I walked out of the living room into the hallway. The next thing I can remember, I'm on my hands and knees and there is sweat absolutely pouring off me. It was off my head, my back, my arms. It, it was dripping on the floor. And soon my wife came out, you're all right, what's, what's you know? And I, I can remember saying, you know, I don't know, there's something wrong, something can matter. No, I was still conscious. I didn't have no pain as I can remember. So I said, just get me to bed, get me to bed. And she said, I think you need to see a doctor. And I'm afraid my attitude in life has been stubborn. Probably a bit of an arsehole half the time. But um, I only do what I want to do. I won't do what anybody tells me to do. So I went to bed. Uh, got up in the morning and I felt terrible. So I went to see my doctor and this was in Bulgaria and here winter and summer changes literally over a day. You could have uh, like, I don't know, say freezing today, tomorrow it could be 35 degrees centigrade and it was one of them days and when you sit and the doctor's here you just go sit outside in a queue, it was heaving packed. And I went in, I said, oh, I don't feel very good. He said, what's the matter? I said, you know, I said, I just feel rough like, you know. I said, I've been sweating. He says, oh, because you're diabetic, aren't you? He says, you see all them people outside the doctors are here? Yeah. He says, they're all diabetic. They, they need to change the medication. So without even really looking at me, he just changed the diabetic medication and sent me home. And this was on a Friday. So I goes home and I was, took these tablets to give me. And I was like, Saturday terrible, Sunday terrible, Monday Sue says, I need to take you back. So I went back to the hospital, but we went into the A&E, they did um, an ECG, and says, you've had an heart attack. I thought, fucking okay, hell, great. Straight in. Um, now, the, what they did, they, there's two arteries that was blocked, I had to have two stents in one and one stent in another. Now, me being a mechanic, I thought my heart was like an oil pump in an engine and my arteries was the oil lines. Now, if your oil pump clogs up and the oil lines are blocked, clean them out, put it all back together, new oil, new filter, boom, where you go, things working fine. Now, I thought, right, they've got to put stents in, when they put the stents in, my arteries are going to be clear, my heart will work again. You now, a couple of weeks off my feet, I'll be up and out and gone. Christ, how wrong was I? Now, uh, I went home and I couldn't believe, I couldn't walk. I could get out of a chair, but I couldn't even walk from the living room to the kitchen. I was out of breath. And this went on and on, and I went back to the doctors, and he says, You've got to get yourself some exercise, get yourself moving. And I was trying that and I was determined I was gonna, this ain't gonna knacker me like this isn't. Anyway, six months later, I'm able to walk sort of five or 600 meters. Because what, unknown to me, not only had I had a heart attack, but the five days of not getting seen before I got to the hospital, I'd done an awful lot of damage to my heart. And that was the problem, there's only part of the muscle in the art was working. Now, as time went on, I'd been out on a bike, and like I say, my mates, or so-called mates, dropped me so you didn't hear from anybody. Uh, and I got down, 
and for the first two years I had big problems. I was in and out of hospital, in and out of hospital. To the point in the end, I ended up with six stents in my heart um, through complications and what have you. Now, I did. I got down and I got really bad. There's some pretty dark days and uh, you know, the wife got worried about, I thought, well, how I was and who I'd been. And all of a sudden, I'm a bloke who can hardly walk upstairs. Uh, and it, it, re it really did me in. And I had some terrible thoughts go through my mind. Now I was, I sat down one day, well, I, well, actual fact, what it was, I've been in hospital and I, I used to get these, uh, I wouldn't say they're attacks, but uh, terrible pains, like I was going to have another heart attack and I was in and out of hospital. And they was checking it out and they're going, no, your arteries are fine, your arteries are fine. And I said, well, look, it's, it's my body, there's something wrong here. And he was getting in a panic about it. And I, um, a young doctor said one day to me, he said, look, he says, there's nothing wrong. He says, all your arteries and everything's working as good as it can be. He says, it's never going to be good, but it's as good as it can be. He says, it's all in your mind. I says, well, if it's in my mind, what's the pains in my chest? And he says, it's in your mind. He says, you've got chest pains. He says, obviously, your chest doesn't stretch the same as it used to and all that sort of thing. Like. And it sort of did make me think a bit. And... I went home and I had quite a few of these attacks, but I didn't want to go into hospital. I thought oh, I'm making myself look stupid here. And then I began to find that if I stuck it out after a couple of days, it would disappear. Now it was a bit of a worry, then, because I didn't re didn't know where if I was having another heart attack or I'd get over it. But obviously I'm talking to you now, so I got over it. <laughs> and I thought I've got to get back on my bike. I hadn't been out on a bike since I couldn't remember when. And uh, I had a California 1400, nearly new bike sat in the garage, Triumph Street Scrambler, um, Motor Guzzi Breva 1100. Uh, and I used to sit on them and move them about, or try. I, I, they were just too big for me. So then I decided, right, if I want to get back on the road properly, I've got to change my ways. I had dumped, made a decision to dump my previous life forget it. It was no good to me at all, that. Uh, and I started to look round for something I could ride that was lighter. So I downgraded the bike, that's what I've done. Uh, I think I got a BMW uh, GS650. It was nice a lot and I rode that. And I could move it about, I moved it about in the garage, ride it. The suspension was nice and soft and comfortable, which made a big difference, didn't shake me about. And I started on that, only short rides, but it got me out and it extended the rides every time I went. Now, the one thing I did realise, every time I had a bit of a bad day, because I was still having them, you know, dark thoughts, shall we call them, I was uh, jump on my bike, I'd ride my bike, come home, I was like a different person. Cheerful, I felt like, oh, it was unreal. So, one of the answers to the thing is, yes, ride a bike. It's good therapy for you. And it really is. Uh, I, I, I used to like fishing a bit. I did try fishing, but some days, because you sat there, you got nothing else to think about, and you think about the wrong things. But when you're riding a bike, you're concentrating on what you're doing and you're looking around at the scenery and it's just changing constantly. Uh, now, if you start to get a few twinges in the chest, slow down a bit. You know, don't push it too hard. Now, without that, I don't think my mind would have uh, sorted itself out, shall we say. Um, now, I'm a pretty proud person. I don't want to tell anybody a weakness, make anybody think I've got a weakness. That's, that's just how I am. But that's how I was, and I was so pleased. Then we went through, one of the things that happened, we went through the COVID periods. Now, the last thing I wanted to do was mix with anybody. I was frightened myself that they might catch COVID. But I used to go out on the bike on my own, so 
really, I've stuck to that now, that I just ride on my own. I, I go everywhere, all over the place. You can't beat it. Um, the wife, as far as the wife is concerned, she was sceptical about me getting back on a bike, but when she saw what it did for me, and how I felt, she was all for it. Says, just take your time, you know, you're your own man. You, you know what you can do and what you can't do. Now, since that time, I've changed my bike several times, keep swapping and changing. Now, I've ended up with the Royal Enfield Himalayan here. Um, it's perfect for me, suspension wise, just makes me feel good. I enjoy it. That's another thing. Whatever you're going to do in your life now, enjoy it. Um, I can't say how many years I've got riding or doing anything. You just don't know. Don't think about that at all. Just live for the day, live for the moment, get out, do what you can. But all I can say to these guys is you're your own man you have to make your own decisions don't be frightened about riding a bike yes, if you're like me you like the guys, you've got Harleys and stuff like this they're too heavy for you forget your ego downsize to something that you enjoy riding and it's, it's uh, and manageable for you Forget about what anybody else, even if it's uh, an automatic scooter, get yourself one. Ride it. It's all about riding the bike. Hmm, I'm in the right place here. No, I think I've come the wrong road here. Um, let me turn around. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought now. Yeah, anything. Look for something, you know, to be, <laughs> to be honest, if I'd not had a heart attack, I wouldn't be sat on this uh, Himalayan, I'll tell you now. I just wouldn't do. It was, uh, yeah, I don't want to say, I think for who I was, I'd still be riding choppers and big cruisers. But now, I love this, so, if you like, I'm taking a positive out of what's happened to me. Um, all I can tell you is, exercise as much as you can, get it out as much as you can, and if you're a biker, get yourself a bike. Uh, yes, it won't be what you want, but don't give a toss what anybody else thinks or says to you about it. You buy something, you get it out, and it's, it's the, the best medicine for you, believe me. Uh, it's not easy, because I'm only telling you my side of things. You know, I'm afraid there is going to be people who will get just can't manage it. But if you keep at it long enough, you find your will. Um, but don't. What I'm saying is, don't sit at home. Don't sit there drooling. You know. Yes, I agree. Get rid of your big heavy bikes. They're no good for you at all. Uh, you want to get out you want to get out now one of the things I don't have many bad days at all now life seems uh, bliss to me I'm thankful I'm still here uh, uh, me I've got a lovely wife nice house I love living in Bulgaria I've got my bikes I'm, do I'm doing everything that a normal person would do um, I'm not saying I'm abnormal <laughs> yeah you do have to make a few uh, changes but I'm enjoying myself that's how everybody could be don't worry about it um, now when I have a slightly bad day sometimes I, I get up and feel a bit crappy first thing I'll do make myself a flask make myself a sandwich and I come out I go for a ride and I go somewhere where I think is peaceful, something that calms me. Yeah, it calms me. Uh, I'll sit and have a coffee, have a drink. Like my favourite place because I live in Bulgaria is either in the mountains or overlooking the Danube. I love it, absolutely love it. I wouldn't swap it for anything. Um, now, I'm going to pull up here at one of my... Uh, 
little places I found. Might look like the middle of nowhere. <laughs> but right, let's have a look. flask out this is what I do I've got loads of places like this A sandwich and flask Oop. this is a place that not many people know about All right there's my bike right this is where I come, a bit of peace and quiet. Uh, like I say, I'm in Bulgaria. This over here is the Danube. Over there, the land you can see, that pile and what have you, and that's Romania. Now, if I stop talking, you have a listen. No noise, beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I say, I hope this video's answered some of the questions for uh, the people that's sent me them. I couldn't believe how many I, I've sent. It was literally dozens and dozens and dozens. So there's a lot of people in the same situation. Um, got doubts in the minds. get yourself in a rut I suppose so I hope it's helped you just down as your bike get back out makes you feel good this is what I do you know just just great um, well like I say I usually say hope you've enjoyed the video it's not that sort of video uh, hope it's been useful to them um, not something I like to talk about but if it helps people yeah, it's okay by me uh, I don't mind if anybody does want to send me a message a private message from a, I'm not a psychiatrist I'm a mechanic <laughs> but you no know, if you're desperate talk to me but only if you're desperate <laughs> right guys I'll see you in the next video uh, remember subscribe click like big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.